The massive human warship emerged from the void of slipspace, looming over the Saurian homeworld like a gleaming silver sword. Captain Carl Jones stared out the bridge viewport at the planet below, its surface a patchwork of sprawling cities and vast agricultural zones. He had expected a routine exploration mission, a chance to chart new star systems and make peaceful first contact with alien civilizations. Instead, the THS Indomitable found itself in the heart of the tyrannical Saurian Empire, a power that viewed the technologically advanced human vessel as a potential threat to their dominion. Jones knew the stakes were high. Humanity had only recently ventured beyond its home solar system, still naive to the complex political landscape of the galaxy. A single misstep could plunge them into an interstellar war they were ill-prepared to fight. He had to tread carefully to balance the need for diplomacy with the imperative of protecting his crew and his ship. The Empire wasted no time in dispatching an envoy to the Indomitable. Boron, a member of the royal family and a cunning spymaster, approached the human ship under the guise of a mere courier, offering a deceptively cordial welcome to Saurian space. Jones had no choice but to accept the invitation, knowing that to refuse would be seen as an act of aggression. As Boron boarded the Indomitable, he marveled at the stark contrast between the egalitarian human crew and the rigid hierarchy of his own society. The humans worked together seamlessly, their unity and purpose evident in every aspect of the ship's operation. It was a far cry from the backstabbing and power struggles that defined life in the Saurian court. But even as Boren probed for information about human culture and capabilities, trouble was brewing back on the homeworld. Emperor Zorgax, paranoid and ruthless, saw the Indomitable as a direct challenge to his rule. He feared that the humans' advanced technology and foreign ideals would inspire rebellion among his oppressed subjects, sparking a revolution that could topple his regime. As he mobilized his forces for a preemptive strike, the fate of two civilizations hung in the balance. The decisions made by Captain Jones and his crew in the coming hours would determine the course of not just their mission, but the future of the entire galaxy. Captain Jones listened intently as Xena shared her perspective on life under the Saurian Empire. The young princess's words painted a grim picture of a society stifled by fear and oppression, where the slightest hint of dissent was crushed without mercy. Jones couldn't help but feel a surge of sympathy for her plight and a growing sense of responsibility to help in whatever way he could. As Xena spoke of her desire for change, Jones saw a flicker of hope in her eyes a spark of defiance that refused to be extinguished by the Empire's tyranny. He recognized in her a kindred spirit, someone who believed in the power of ideas to transform lives and shape destinies. Their conversation was cut short by the urgent message from the bridge. Jones and Xena rushed to the command deck, where they found the crew in a state of high alert. The view screen showed a formation of Saurian battlecruisers surrounding the Indomitable, their weapons primed and targeting systems locked on the human ship. We're being hailed, Captain, the communications officer reported, his voice tight with tension. Jones nodded, on screen. The image of Emperor Zorgax filled the view screen, his reptilian features twisted into a mask of rage. Surrender your ship immediately, he demanded, his voice dripping with menace. You have violated our sovereign territory and conspired with traitors to undermine our rule. Comply now or face annihilation. Jones stood firm, his gaze unwavering. With all due respect, Emperor, we have done no such thing. We come in peace, seeking only to learn and to build bridges between our peoples. There's no need for violence. Zorgax snarled, his eyes narrowing to slits. You dare lecture me, human? Your very presence here is an act of war. Prepare to be boarded and your crew detained for interrogation. As the transmission cut off, Jones turned to his crew. Battle stations, he ordered, his voice calm but urgent. Raise shields and charge weapons, but hold your fire. We'll defend ourselves if necessary, but let's try to defuse this situation before it escalates. Xena stepped forward, her expression determined. Captain, I may be able to help. If I can get a message to my allies within the palace, they could mobilize support and put pressure on my father to stand down. Jones considered for a moment, then nodded. Do it. We'll buy you as much time as we can. As Xena hurried off the bridge, Jones turned to his crew. This is it, people. We've trained for this. Stay focused, do your jobs, and trust in each other. 
We'll get through this together. The bridge crew responded with a chorus of acknowledgments, their commitment strengthened by their captain's words. As the indomitable prepared to face the full might of the Saurian Empire, they knew that the fate of not just their ship, but the future of both their civilizations, rested on the outcome of the coming battle. The die was cast, and there would be no turning back. The tense standoff between the indomitable and the Saurian fleet stretched on, each passing second thick with the possibility of violence. Captain Jones surveyed his bridge crew, their faces etched with tenacity and fear in equal measure. He knew they were outgunned, outmatched, and rapidly running out of options. Engineering, divert all power from weapons to shields, Jones ordered, his voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. Communications, prepare to broadcast on all frequencies. As the Saurian battlecruisers closed in, their weapons arrays glowing with deadly energy, Jones made his move. The Indomitable's weapon systems powered down, and a holographic projection of a white flag materialized above the ship's hull. The effect was immediate. The Saurian fleet's advance faltered, confusion rippling through their a a formation. Jones seized the moment, opening a channel to Emperor Zorgax's flagship. This is Captain Carl Jones of the THS Indomitable. We seek peaceful resolution to this conflict. For several agonizing heartbeats, there was no response. Then Princess Xena's voice crackled over the comms. Father, please, allow me to negotiate with the humans. An unprovoked attack could have dire consequences for the Empire. The bridge of the Indomitable fell silent as they awaited Zorgax's decision. Finally, the Emperor's gravelly voice filled the air. You have one standard hour, daughter. Do not disappoint me. Relief washed over the human crew, but Jones knew this was only a temporary reprieve. As Xena and Boron returned to the Indomitable, he prepared himself for the delicate dance of diplomacy that lay ahead. The negotiations unfolded in the ship's conference room, a circular space dominated by a holographic display of both fleets. Jones sat across from Xena and Boron, the tension between them palpable. We come in peace, Jones began, his words measured and careful. Our mission is one of exploration and scientific discovery, not conquest. Boron's eyes narrowed, and yet your ship bristles with weaponry, curious armaments for peaceful explorers. As Jones attempted to explain the defensive nature of their systems, a subtle vibration ran through the deck plates. He frowned, a cold tendril of doubt creeping up his spine. Unbeknownst to those in the conference room, a shadow war had begun within the Indomitable's hull. Saurian commandos, led by the ruthless Sark, moved with predatory grace through the ship's maintenance tunnels. They planted explosive charges on critical systems, their clawed fingers dancing over unfamiliar human technology as they sought to breach the ship's databases. In the security center, Lieutenant Commander Elena Ramirez's eyes widened as she registered multiple breaches in the ship's outer hull. Intruder alert, she barked into her comm unit. All security teams, we have hostels aboard. Initiate lockdown procedures. The Indomitable's corridors became a labyrinth of danger as human security forces clashed with Saurian infiltrators. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, leaving scorch marks on pristine bulkheads. The acrid smell of ozone and burned circuitry filled the air as both sides fought for control of the ship. Back in the conference room, the negotiations had reached a critical juncture. Boron, his scaled face unreadable, leaned forward. The simple truth, Captain, is that your presence here represents an existential threat to our way of life. Your technology, your ideals, they could upend millennia of Saurian tradition and hierarchy. Before Jones could respond, the ship rocked violently. Alarms blared as the Indomitable's weakened shields buckled under a barrage of Saurian weapons fire. Admiral Zal, consumed by paranoia and bloodlust, had ordered his fleet to attack. As chaos erupted around them, Jones locked eyes with Xena and Boron. In that moment, they all realized the same thing. Their time for talk had run out. Now they would have to fight not just for their own survival, but for the future of both their civilizations. The Indomitable shuddered as another volley of Saurian weapons fire slammed into its weakened shields. On the bridge, Captain Jones gripped the arms of his command chair, his squeezing hard with tension. Shields at 12% and falling, sir. 
reported the tactical officer, her voice strained. Jones took a deep breath, steeling himself for what came next. Lieutenant Commander Ramirez, return fire. Target their weapons arrays with the rail cannons. Surgical strikes only. Ramirez nodded grimly. Aye, Captain. Targeting solutions locked. The experimental rail cannons hummed to life, their electromagnetic coils charging with terrifying energy. With a series of thunderous cracks, hypervelocity projectiles erupted from the Indomitable's hull, streaking across space in brilliant arcs of blue-white light. The effect was devastating. Three Saurian cruisers immediately fell out of formation, their weapons systems reduced to molten slag. A fourth spun wildly, venting atmosphere from multiple hull breaches. But even as the human crew allowed themselves a moment of hope, chaos erupted within the Indomitable itself. The ship's internal sensors flashed red as multiple breaches were detected across several decks. Security teams, report! Jones barked into the shipwide calm. Lieutenant Reed's voice crackled through, punctuated by the sound of plasma fire. We're engaged with Saurian commandos, sir. They've breached the outer hull and are attempting to access critical systems. Jones turned to find Princess Xena already moving towards the bridge exit. I can help, she said, her eyes blazing with grit. I know their tactics, their weak points. For a moment, Jones hesitated. Then he gave a curt nod. Go, but be careful. As Xena raced to join the fray, the battle within the Indomitable's corridors intensified. Human security forces clashed with Saurian infiltrators in close quarters combat, the air thick with acrid smoke and the smell of scorched metal. Lieutenant Reed and his team had cornered a group of commandos near engineering when Xena arrived. Without hesitation, she joined the fight, her intimate knowledge of Saurian combat techniques proving invaluable. Their scales are weakest at the joints, she called out, ducking under a plasma bolt. Aim there! Reed adjusted his aim, his next shot catching a Saurian in the knee. The alien went down with a shriek of pain and rage. One by one, the infiltrators fell. But as Reed's team pressed their advantage, a lone figure slipped away unnoticed. Sark, the Saurian commando leader, moved with predatory grace through the ship's maintenance tunnels. A detonator clutched in his clawed hand. On the bridge, Jones watched in a growing horror as the tactical display showed more Saurian ships joining the attack. The indomitable shields flickered and died under the relentless barrage. Hull breaches on decks four through seven, reported the damage control officer. We've lost main power to the starboard nacelle. Jones opened his mouth to give new orders when a massive explosion rocked the ship. Alarms blared as critical systems began to fail across the board. Engineering reports multiple detonations, shouted the communications officer. We've lost engines and life support is failing. The realization hit Jones like a physical blow. The indomitable pride of the human fleet was dying. He closed his eyes for a brief moment, allowing himself one last pang of regret before snapping back into action. Initiate emergency evacuation procedures, he ordered, his voice steady despite the chaos around him. All non-essential personnel to the escape pods immediately. As crew members rushed to obey, Jones turned to Ramirez. I need volunteers to stay behind and man the weapons. We have to buy time for the evacuation. Ramirez stood straighter, her chin lifted in defiance of their dire situation. You've got them, sir. We'll hold the line. Outside, the first escape pods began to launch, streaking away from the crippled Indomitable. But their flight was short-lived. Admiral Zayal's voice boomed across all frequencies, cold and merciless. Destroy them all. Let none escape. The Saurian fleet opened fire on the defenseless pods, picking them off one by one. Jones watched helplessly as the tactical display showed his crew being systematically annihilated. With unwavering grit, he activated the ship's long-range transmitter. This is Captain Carl Jones of the THS Indomitable, he began, broadcasting on all frequencies. To any Allied forces within range, we are under attack and require immediate assistance. Our situation is critical. Please respond. For agonizing moments, there was only silence. Then, as if in answer to an impossible prayer, new contacts appeared on the tactical display. A ragtag fleet of ships, their designs a hodgepodge of different alien technologies, dropped out of slipspace on the battle's fringes. 
a gruff voice crackled over the comms. This is Thrax of the Free Worlds Coalition. We heard your call, humans. Hold fast. The cavalry has arrived. As Thrax's rebel fleet engaged the Saurian forces, creating a corridor for the remaining escape pods, Jones allowed himself a grim smile. The battle was just getting started, but for the first time since the attack began, a flicker of hope burned in his chest. He turned to what remained of his bridge crew, his eyes gleaming with renewed commitment. All right, people, let's show these lizards what humanity is made of. The arrival of Thrax's rebel fleet shifted the tide of battle. Captain Jones wasted no time capitalizing on this unexpected advantage. All batteries, concentrate fire on the Saurian flagship's port flank, he ordered, his voice carrying over the din of alarms and status reports. The Indomitable's remaining weapons blazed to life, joining the rebel ships in a devastating barrage against Admiral Zal's forces. Saurian vessels began to falter under the combined assault, their formation splintering as they struggled to regroup. In the midst of the chaos, Princess Xena made her move. She activated a secure comm channel, her reptilian features set with unbreakable spirit. Boron, it's time. Are you with me? There was a moment of tense silence before Boron's gravelly voice responded. I am, your highness. The old ways die today. Across the Saurian fleet, carefully placed sleeper agents sprang into action. Key systems were sabotaged, weapons arrays disabled, and communication networks scrambled. Confusion spread like wildfire through the Imperial ranks as ship after ship found itself crippled from within. Admiral Zial's enraged roar echoed through his flagship's bridge. What is the meaning of this? Crush those human vermin! But his words fell on deaf ears as more of his fleet turned against him. Xena's voice rang out across all frequencies, her words igniting the spark of rebellion that had long smoldered in the hearts of many Saurians. My fellow citizens, too long have we lived under the boot of tyranny. Today, we claim our freedom. On board the Indomitable, Captain Jones watched in awe as nearly a third of the Saurian fleet broke formation, turning their weapons on their former allies. The space around them erupted into a furious melee as loyalist and rebel forces clashed. Sir, Lieutenant Commander Ramirez called out, her eyes wide with disbelief. We're receiving a transmission from Princess Xena. She's, she's requesting our assistance in capturing Emperor Zorgax's flagship. Jones allowed himself a grim smile. Well then, let's not keep the lady waiting. Helm, set course for the Emperor's vessel. All hands, prepare for close quarters combat. The Indomitable surged forward, its hull scarred and blackened, but its spirit unbroken. As they closed in on Zorgax's massive ship, Jones caught sight of other vessels converging on their position. Xena's rebel marines, ready to strike at the heart of the Empire. Aboard Zorgax's flagship, alarms blared as the Emperor realized the extent of the betrayal. Xena, he bellowed, his scaled fists clenching in rage. Bring me my traitorous daughter's head! But even as his elite guards mobilized, they found themselves outmaneuvered and outgunned. Xena's forces, bolstered by the human crew of the Indomitable, swarmed through the corridors of the massive vessel. Jones led a strike team alongside Xena, their unlikely alliance forged in the heat of battle. They fought their way through waves of loyalist troops, the ship's halls echoing with the sound of plasma fire and hand-to-hand -hand combat. As they neared the bridge, Xena turned to Jones, her eyes gleaming with a mix of willpower and something darker. My father must be taken alive, she hissed. He will answer for his crimes. Jones nodded grimly, understanding the weight of the moment. With a final push, they breached the bridge's defenses. Emperor Zorgax stood before them, his once regal bearing now tinged with desperation. You dare? he snarled, reaching for a weapon. But before he could act, Xena was upon him. In a blur of motion, she disarmed her father and forced him to his knees. The bridge fell silent as the reality of the situation sank in. Xena's voice, when it came, was filled with steel. Emperor Zorgax, you are hereby stripped of your title and authority. Your reign of terror ends today. As word of the Emperor's capture spread, the remaining Loyalist forces began to falter. Admiral Zal's fleet, once the pride of the Saurian Empire, 
retreated in disarray. Standing on the bridge of the captured flagship, Jones watched as the stars beyond the view screen slowly stopped spinning. The immediate battle was over, but he knew that the real work was just beginning. Zena approached him, her posture straight despite the obvious fatigue. Captain Jones, I thank you for your assistance, but I fear we have only taken the first step on a long and challenging path. Jones nodded, his mind already racing with the implications of what they had just accomplished. Indeed, Your Highness. The question now is, where do we go from here? Here? Jones mused aloud, his gaze fixed on the stars beyond the view screen. Xena's reptilian features softened for a moment. We rebuild, Captain. We create something better from the ashes of the old empire. In the weeks that followed, the princess moved with startling efficiency. Jones watched as she appointed trusted allies to key positions, laying the groundwork for a new galactic order. Boron, the gruff voice of dissent within the Saurian ranks, found himself elevated to Minister of Internal Security. Thrax, whose timely arrival had turned the tide of battle, was named Admiral of the fledgling Republican fleet. Meanwhile, the crew of the Indomitable found themselves thrust into the spotlight. Across a dozen liberated worlds, they were hailed as heroes, their exploits told and retold in a hundred languages. But for Jones, the adulation rang hollow. He stood now in dress uniform, back standing tall, as he addressed the assembled crowd. The memorial plaza on New Terra was packed with mourners, human and alien alike. Before him, a sea of holographic portraits flickered, the faces of those who had given their lives retaking the indomitable from Zal's forces. We gather today to honor the fallen, Jones began, his voice carrying across the hushed crowd. These brave souls paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. As the ceremony concluded, Jones found himself approached by Princess Zena. Captain, she said, her voice low, I require your counsel. We're convening a constitutional convention, and I would value your input on matters of governance. Over the following days, Jones and his senior staff found themselves in long, intense debates with Zena and her advisors. The princess seemed genuinely committed to enshrining human ideals of democracy and individual rights into the fabric of the new republic. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, Zena listed off, her clawed finger tapping a data pad. These concepts are foreign to many of my people, but I believe they are essential if we are to forge a truly just society. Not everyone shared the princess's enthusiasm for change. During one particularly heated session, a cluster of Saurian nobles stormed out, their scales flushed with anger. This is madness, one of them hissed. You would strip us of our birthright, hand power to the masses? Zena's eyes narrowed dangerously. The old ways are dead, counselor. Adapt or be left behind. The mounting tensions came to a head when reports reached the capital of armed uprisings on several frontier worlds. Zena's response was swift and brutal. She dispatched General Rath, a battle-scarred veteran of the rebellion, to crush the nascent insurrection. Jones found himself summoned to Zena's war room, where holographic displays showed Republican Guard dropships descending on rebel strongholds. This isn't right, Jones argued, gesturing at the scenes of violence. We're supposed to be building a better future, not perpetuating the cycle of oppression. Zena's tail lashed in frustration. You don't understand, Captain. If we show weakness now, everything we fought for will crumble. Sometimes, hard choices must be made. Their heated debate was interrupted by the arrival of a breathless aide. Your Highness Captain, the young Saurian gasped. We've just received an urgent report from intelligence. Admiral Zal has escaped custody. Jones felt his blood run cold. Escaped? How? The aide's next words sent a chill through the room. He's not alone. A cabal of loyalists broke him out, and they've stolen an experimental bioweapon. Our sources indicate it's capable of rendering entire planets uninhabitable. Zena's eyes met Jones's, a silent understanding passing between them. The fragile peace they'd fought so hard to achieve now hung by a thread. Prepare the indomitable for immediate departure, Zena ordered, her voice steely with persistence. Captain Jones, I'll be accompanying you on this mission. 
We must stop Zal before he can unleash this weapon. As they strode towards the hangar bay, Jones's mind raced with the implications of their task. The hunt for Zal would take them into uncharted territory, both literally and figuratively. He knew that the choices they made in the coming days would shape the future of the galaxy for generations to come. The Indomitable's engines thrummed to life, lifting the scarred but unbroken ship from its berth. As they accelerated towards the stars, Jones couldn't shake the feeling that this mission would test not just their strength, but the very ideals upon which they sought to build their new society. The Indomitable's engines roared to life, propelling the battle-scarred vessel into the inky void of space. Captain Jones stood on the bridge, his mind focused as he gazed at the star map before him. Princess Xena paced beside him, her clawed feet clicking against the metal deck. Our intelligence networks have narrowed down Zal's location, Xena said, her reptilian eyes fixed on the holographic display. An abandoned Saurian military facility in the Kylara Nebula. Jones nodded, studying the swirling gases of the nebula. It's a perfect hiding spot. Natural interference will make long-range scans difficult. He turned to his communications officer. Signal General Wrath. We'll need his Republican Guard for a ground assault. The Joint Task Force moved with precision, the Indomitable leading a fleet of sleek Republican vessels through the nebula's treacherous currents. As they approached the facility, Jones watched from orbit as Wrath's dropships pierced the planet's atmosphere. The comm crackled to life with the sounds of battle. Plasma fire and explosions echoed through the bridge as Wrath's troops engaged Zal's loyalists. Jones gripped the arms of his chair, helpless to do more than provide orbital support. Hours later, Wrath's grim face appeared on the interface. The base is secure, but Zal and the bioweapons are gone. He paused, his scales glistening with sweat and grime. We did recover some data. You need to see this, Captain. The information Wrath's team uncovered chilled Jones to his core. Holographic projections displayed the true nature of Zal's weapon, a mutagenic virus capable of liquefying all organic matter on a planetary scale. By the stars, Xena breathed, her usual composure shaken. Before they could process the horror of this revelation, Alarms blared across the bridge. Lieutenant Commander Ramirez's fingers flew across her console. Sir, we're intercepting transmissions. Zial is planning to launch the bioweapon at a human colony. Joan's mind raced. He's trying to frame the Republic, shatter our alliance before it can take root. Zena's eyes narrowed. We can't let that happen. The Indomitable surged into action, racing against time to intercept Zial's stealth missiles. The ship plunged into the heart of a raging ion storm, the crew fighting against violent energy discharges that threatened to tear the vessel apart. Shields at 30%, an ensign called out as another tendril of ionic energy lashed across their bow. Stay on course, Jones ordered, his nuchals tightening as he gripped the command chair. We're their only hope. Through skill and sheer force of will, they navigated the storm's fury. Jones watched the tactical display with nervous excitement as the missile signatures appeared on the edge of their sensor range. Weapons locked, Ramirez shouted. Fire. The Indomitable's remaining weapon banks blazed to life. Lances of energy sliced through the storm, finding their marks with pinpoint accuracy. The bridge erupted in cheers as the missiles winked out of existence, mere moments before they would have reached the unsuspecting colony. But their victory was short-lived. A priority message flashed across Jones's personal terminal. Zael's cloaked warship had been tracked to Krastar IV, a war-torn world on the fringes of known space. This ends now, Jones said, his voice carrying the weight of command. He turned to Xena. Princess, I request the assistance of your Republican guards for a final assault. Xena nodded, her eyes gleaming with the promise of justice. Granted, Captain, let's finish this. The Indomitable descended through Krastar IV's turbulent atmosphere, landing zones scouted and secured by Wrath's advance teams. Jones led a mixed force of his security personnel and Republican guards through the ruins of what had once been a thriving city. Zale's stronghold loomed before them, a fortress of twisted metal and pulsing energy shields. Wrath's troops moved with military precision, clearing sectors and neutralizing Loyalist resistance. 
Jones and Wrath fought side by side, human and Saurian united in purpose, as they battled their way deeper into the compound. Plasma bolts sizzled past, leaving scorch marks on ancient stone walls. They burst into Zal's inner sanctum just as the Admiral was activating some sort of interdimensional gateway. The disgraced Saurian's eyes widened in shock, then narrowed with hate. You're too late, Zal snarled, his hand hovering over a control panel. Time seemed to slow as Zal slammed his palm down, releasing a cloud of sickly green mist, the last of his bioweapons. Jones watched in horror as the deadly particles began to spread. But then Wrath was moving, faster than Jones thought possible. The general threw himself into the path of the expanding cloud, using his own body as a living shield. No, Jones shouted, but it was too late. As Wrath's scales began to bubble and dissolve, Jones seized the moment of distraction. He launched himself at Zyal, tackling the admiral to the ground. They grappled fiercely, rolling dangerously close to the pulsing energy of the gateway. With a final burst of strength, Jones pinned Zal, securing his arms behind his back. The admiral's struggles weakened, the fight finally going out of him. Jones looked up to see Wrath, his body ravaged by the bioweapon but still standing. The general gave a weak nod before collapsing. As Republican medics rushed to Wrath's aid, Jones hauled Zal to his feet. The weight of what they'd accomplished and what it had cost, settled over him like a shroud. The galaxy had been saved from annihilation, but the road to lasting peace still stretched out before them, fraught with challenges yet to come. Jones exhaled slowly, his grip loosening on Zal's limp form. The acrid stench of the bioweapon lingered in the air, mingling with the ozone smell of spent plasma charges. Medics swarmed around General Wrath's prone body, their urgent voices a low buzz in the background. Secure the prisoner, Jones ordered, his voice hoarse. Two Republican guards stepped forward, restraining the defeated Zayal with energy cuffs. In the days that followed, a whirlwind of activity swept through the newly formed Galactic Republic. Princess Xena, her scales gleaming under the harsh lights of the planetary capital, addressed a sea of faces, human, Saurian, and a dozen other species. Today we stand united, she proclaimed her voice carried across the vast plaza. The tyranny of the old empire is no more. In its place, we build a future of shared prosperity and mutual respect. Jones stood at attention beside the makeshift stage, his dress uniform pristine despite the weight of recent battles. As Zena spoke, his eyes scanned the crowd, ever vigilant for threats. The ceremony reached its climax as Zena beckoned Jones and his crew forward. For their unwavering courage and pivotal role in our victory, I bestow upon Captain Jones and Lieutenant Commander Ramirez the Order of the Rising Stars, the highest honor our new republic can offer. Jones felt the weight of the medal as it was placed around his neck, but it was nothing compared to the weight of responsibility that came with it. Later, in a private chamber overlooking the sprawling cityscape, Zena turned to Jones, her expression uncharacteristically vulnerable. Captain, what we've built here is fragile. It needs protection, guidance. She paused, her tail twitching slightly. I propose that Earth join us as a sovereign protectorate. Your world's expertise would be invaluable in safeguarding our shared future. Jones considered her words carefully. It's an intriguing proposal, Your Highness. But Earth's leaders are cautious. They may not be eager to involve themselves in galactic affairs so soon. Before Xena could respond, the door slid open. Boron, her newly appointed advisor, entered with a data pad clutched in his clawed hand. Urgent news, your highness. We've intercepted disturbing reports from the Tartarus Rifts. The holographic display flickered to life, showing a chaotic maze of spatial anomalies. Boron's voice was grim as he continued. A group of Imperial Warmasters has fled there with a cache of experimental bioweapons. Our intelligence suggests they're even more devastating than what Zal possessed. Xena's eyes narrowed. We can't allow these fanatics to threaten everything we've built. She turned to Jones. Captain, I need the Indomitable for this mission. You're the only one I trust to navigate those treacherous rifts and neutralize this threat. Jones nodded, his mind already racing through tactical possibilities. We'll need local support. The rifts are unmapped, dangerous. 
I may have a solution, Boron interjected. There's a tribe of human space gypsies who've made the rifts their home. They could be persuaded to aid us. Within hours, the Indomitable was underway, its battle-scarred hull a testament to past victories as it plunged into the swirling chaos of the Tartarus rifts. Jones stood on the bridge, watching as reality itself seemed to twist and bend around them. Sensors are barely functioning, sir, Ramirez reported, her fingers dancing across her console. These spatial distortions are playing havoc with our systems. A proximity alarm blared, and Jones barked out orders. Evasive maneuvers! All hands! Brace for impact! The Indomitable shuddered as it narrowly avoided colliding with a massive chunk of debris that seemed to materialize out of nowhere. As the ship stabilized, a new voice crackled over the comm system. Unidentified vessel, you're way off course. The accent was unmistakably human, but with an odd lilt to it. State your business in gypsy territory. Jones exchanged a glance with Ramirez before responding. This is Captain Jones of the Republican starship Indomitable. We seek the aid of the space gypsies in a matter of galactic security. There was a long pause before the voice returned. Follow our nav beacon. Any deviation and we'll assume hostile intent. As the Indomitable carefully maneuvered through the treacherous rifts, Jones couldn't shake the feeling that they were venturing into a realm where the normal rules of space and time held little sway. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he knew that the fate of the fledgling Republic, and perhaps the entire galaxy, now rested on the success of their mission. The Indomitable emerged from the Tartarus rifts, its hull bearing fresh scars from the perilous journey. As they approached the gleaming capital of the New Republic, Captain Jones allowed himself a moment of satisfaction. The mission had been grueling, but successful. The Imperial War Master's bioweapons had been neutralized, thanks in no small part to the unexpected alliance with the Space Gypsies. The ship's comm system crackled to life. Indomitable, this is capital control. You're cleared for priority docking. Princess Xena awaits your arrival. Minutes later, Jones and his senior staff stood at attention as Princess Xena strode down the gangway, her scales shimmering under the hangar's harsh lights. Captain, she said, her voice carrying a mix of relief and pride. Once again, you've saved countless lives. Before Jones could respond, a thunderous explosion rocked the docking bay. Alarms blared as smoke billowed from a nearby corridor. Assassins, shouted a Republican guard, shoving Xena to the ground as plasma bolts sizzled overhead. Jones reacted instinctively, drawing his sidearm and returning fire. The air filled with acrid smoke and the smell of ozone as security forces engaged the attackers. Through the chaos, he caught glimpses of the assailants, Saurians, but wearing unfamiliar insignias. Get the princess to safety, Jones barked, providing covering fire as Xena's guards hustled her towards a reinforced bunker. The firefight was intense but brief. As the smoke cleared, Jones surveyed the carnage. Several attackers lay dead or wounded, while others had been captured. Boron, Xena's advisor, appeared at Jones's side, his expression grim. This is worse than we feared, Captain. These aren't just disgruntled citizens. They're part of an organized separatist movement. Jones's comm unit chirped. It was Ramirez, still aboard the Indomitable. Sir, we're picking up reports of coordinated attacks across the capital. They're targeting government buildings and human enclaves. The implications chilled Jones to the bone. This wasn't just an assassination attempt. It was the opening salvo of a full-scale insurrection. In the days that followed, the fragile peace of the New Republic shattered. Jones found himself thrust into the role of counterinsurgency leader, coordinating with Republican forces to quell the spreading violence. Intelligence reports painted a grim picture. The separatists, led by a charismatic demagogue named Kurvax, had been quietly building support for months. They preyed on lingering resentment towards the old empire, twisting it into xenophobic fear of human influence. From the bridge of the Indomitable, Jones directed precision strikes against rebel strongholds. Each victory felt hollow as reports of civilian casualties trickled in. The line between combatant and innocent blurred with each passing day. During a tense strategy meeting, Xena paced the war room, her tail lashing with agitation. 
We've identified a major rebel base on Varash the Thru, she said, bringing up a holographic display of a fortified compound. Our intelligence suggests it's a linchpin of Kurvax's network. Jones studied the defenses, his brow furrowed. A frontal assault would be costly. We'd need something to neutralize their defensive grid quickly. Zena's eyes hardened. There is an option. She hesitated, then continued. We've developed a targeted bioweapon. It would incapacitate the base's defenders with minimal collateral damage. The room fell silent. Jones felt a knot form in his stomach. Your Highness, using bioweapons, even in a limited capacity, it's a line we can't uncross. And what lines have the rebels respected? Zena snapped. They bomb civilian targets, slaughter innocents. We must end this quickly before more lives are lost. The argument raged for hours, but in the end, expediency won out over ethics. Jones watched from orbit as the bioweapon was deployed, green mist engulfing the rebel stronghold. The compound fell within hours, but the victory tasted like ashes in his mouth. As the Indomitable prepared for its next mission, an urgent transmission came through. Ramirez's voice was tense as she reported, Sir, long-range sensors have detected an unknown vessel on an attack vector for the capital. It's massive. Jones' blood ran cold as the tactical display revealed the true nature of the threat. A rebel flagship jam-packed with weapons and carrying a payload that dwarfed anything in the Republican arsenal. All hands to battle stations, Jones ordered, his voice steady despite the fear gripping his heart. This is what we've trained for. The fate of the Republic, of the entire galaxy, rests on what we do next. The Indomitable's engines flared to life, propelling the ship towards what could be its final confrontation. The Indomitable's engines roared as it hurtled towards the massive Rebel flagship. On the bridge, Jones gripped his command chair, eyes fixed on the tactical display. Weapons hot, he ordered. Prepare for close quarters engagement. The rebel vessel loomed larger, its hull jam packed with gun emplacements. Plasma bolts lanced out, slamming against the Indomitable's shields. Shields at 80%, Ramirez reported, her voice tight. Their firepower is off the charts, sir. Jones nodded grimly. Evasive pattern Delta, bring us in close. I want to target their engines. The Indomitable banked hard, narrowly avoiding a barrage of missiles. As they closed the distance, Jones could make out individual details on the rebel ship's hull. Scorch marks, hastily welded armor plates, and the cruel lines of experimental weaponry. Sir, Ramirez's voice cut through the chaos. I'm detecting a massive energy buildup in their main gun. If that hits us... Jones didn't hesitate. All power to forward shields. Ramming speed. The crew braced as the indomitable surged forward, plowing into the rebel flagship's flank. Metal screamed and tore as the two ships collided. Alarms blared across the bridge as systems failed. We've breached their hull, Ramirez shouted over the din, but we're losing altitude control. Jones watched in horror as the capital's gleaming towers rushed up to meet them. All hands, brace for impact. The world dissolved into a maelstrom of fire and twisted metal. Jones was thrown from his chair, tumbling across the bridge as the indomitable plummeted. His last conscious thought was of the countless lives in the city below. Darkness. Pain. The acrid smell of smoke and melted circuitry. Jones swam back to consciousness, every nerve screaming. He blinked, trying to focus through the haze of agony. The bridge was a ruin, sparks showering from shattered consoles. Hands grasped him, pulling him from the wreckage. He caught glimpses of rescue workers in heavy protective gear, their faces grim behind soot-streaked visors. The world spun as they carried him out, past scenes of devastation that seared themselves into his fading consciousness. Cool air hit his face as they emerged from the twisted hull. Jones gasped, the effort sending waves of pain through his broken body. Through blurry vision, he saw the palace grounds, now a hellscape of burning debris and frantic activity. Time seemed to stretch and warp as he faded in and out of awareness. Snippets of urgent voices, the whine of medical equipment, the antiseptic smell of a hospital. Then a familiar face swam into view. Princess Xena stood over him, 
her scales dulled with exhaustion and worry. Jones tried to speak, but only managed a weak rasp. Zena took his hand, her touch gentle against his burned skin. Rest, Captain, she said softly. You've done enough. But Jones knew his time was short. With supreme effort, he forced out words past the pain. The Republic. Earth. You must. Zena leaned closer, her eyes glistening. I swear to you, Jones, I will honor your vision. Humans and aliens united in peace. Jones managed a small nod, feeling the last of his strength ebbing away. As darkness closed in, he saw not the sterile hospital room, but a shining future, one he had given everything to create. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.